Greetings. I'm so glad that you're joining us for our virtual masses, and I want to assure you, people of Saints Joseph and Francis Xavier and beyond, that we are praying for you. We, the pastor and the staff, all the priests, we're praying for you uh, during the course of these uh, long and challenging days. So know that we're with you in spirit. If you need something that is not urgent and I can help you, please email me at wwatts at ssjfx.org. If you have an urgent need at any time, please call 847-496-0031. And lastly, if you're willing to help, we're trying to create a virtual community to help one another, to call and check in on our neighbors, Catholic and non-Catholic alike. If you'd like to be part of this virtual community, a helper, an errand runner, something, please send me an email with your contact information. We're in this together, and Christ, our Savior, is in it with us. Thank you. There are a lot of things that we're all missing in these kind of changed environments that we're living in currently. We're missing some of our usual routines, and we're certainly missing the community that we usually pray with. We're missing the handshakes that we exchanged before, the greetings. We're missing the sense that we're all praying together before Mass begins. So maybe before we begin this Mass, I'd invite anybody who's watching this to take a minute and pause and not only remember the people that you usually worship with in prayer, but maybe even go as far as to take a moment and to text or call any of the people that you usually worship that with to remind them that you are engaging in Mass and that you are praying with them and for them at this time. Once you've had a moment to do that, we take a moment to center ourselves in the fact that we as the baptized and we as those who share in the body and blood of Christ are bound throughout the world with a bond so tight it can never be undone. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Sisters and brothers, wherever we are, as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries together, we take a moment to recall that we are deeply dependent on the love and mercy of God, but we remember even more that God never gets tired of extending us that love. And so we pray, Lord Jesus, you are the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the truth that sets us free. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are life of the world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Pour your grace into our hearts, we pray, O Lord, that we may be constantly drawn away from unruly desires and obey by your own gift the heavenly teaching you give us. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Hosea. Thus says the Lord, Return, O Israel, to the Lord your God. You have collapsed through your guilt. Take with your words and return to the Lord. Say to him, Forgive all iniquity and receive what is good that we may render as offerings the bullocks from our stalls. Assyria will not save us, nor shall we have horses to mount. We shall say no more our God to the work of our hands, for in you the orphan finds compassion. I will heal their defection, says the Lord. I will love them freely, for my wrath is turned away from them. I will be like the dew for Israel. He shall blossom like the lily. He shall strike root like the Lebanon cedar and put forth his shoots. His splendor shall be like the olive tree, and his fragrance like the Lebanon cedar. Again, they shall dwell in his shade and raise grain. They shall blossom like the vine, and his fame shall be like the wine of Lebanon. Ephraim, what more has he to do with idols? I have humbled him, but I will prosper him. I am like a verdant cypress tree, because of me you bear fruit. 
Let him who is wise understand these things. Let him who is prudent know them. Straight are the paths of the Lord, in them the just walk, but sinners stumble in them. The word of the Lord. I am the Lord your God, hear my voice. I am the Lord your God, hear my voice. An unfamiliar speech I hear. I relieved his shoulder of the burden. His hands were freed from the basket. In distress you called, and I rescued you. I am the Lord your God, hear my voice. Unseen I answered you in thunder. I tested you at the waters of Meribah. Hear my people, and I will admonish you. O Israel, will you not hear me? There shall be no strange God among you, nor shall you worship any alien God. I, the Lord, am your God, who led you forth from the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Hear my voice. If only my people would hear me, and Israel walk in my ways, I would feed them with the best of wheat, and with honey from the rock I would fill them. I am the Lord your God. Hear my voice. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Repent, says the Lord, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. One of the scribes came to Jesus and asked him, which is the first of all the commandments? Jesus replied, the first is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The scribe said to him, well said, teacher. You are right in saying he is one and there is no other than he. And to love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is worth more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered with understanding, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And no one dared to ask him any more questions. Sisters and brothers, the gospel of the Lord. We lived in a different reality this Lent than we maybe have lived many Lents, but we have an opportunity to observe both of these commandments in maybe a new and different way precisely because of that. At least some of us are going to find ourselves with more time than we might otherwise have had, and that's an opportunity to maybe sink a little bit deeper into our devotional practices. It's an opportunity, for example, to maybe read the daily Gospels or to pray with Mass every day on the videos that we're putting out might be an opportunity to pick up a book of spiritual reading or something that's going to let you move deeper into your faith. It's also an opportunity to focus on loving our neighbor in a very different way than we usually do. And that might be the question that we most want to occupy ourselves with this Lent. What does it mean to love my neighbor as myself right now? Probably a few things. Maybe the first and foremost thing we can do to love our neighbor is to take very seriously what public health officials and experts are telling us is the best way to take care of our neighbor by doing the hard work of social distancing. In the days and weeks to come, we're going to hit a point where we're bored with the social distancing. We're going to crave the connections. We're going to crave the activities that usually fill our lives. And it's going to be harder and harder for us to resist the temptation to stay away from people. Maybe a way to center ourselves in, the, in that is to remind ourselves over and over and over again that we're doing this not because it's an abstract command, but because this is a way to concretely love our neighbor as ourself, to remind ourselves that this frustrating and probably sometimes boring couple of weeks that we're facing gives us a lot of opportunities to love our neighbor as ourself in an unglamorous way. But there are a lot of other ways that we can care for people as well. There are going to be a lot of other people who are badly affected by the shutdowns of bars and restaurants, by the shutdowns of public spaces, people whose livelihoods are tied up in being in public spaces. We as God's people, while loving our neighbor as ourselves, can keep our eye on the lookout for opportunities to care for those people, 
to help them along, to help them get, their, get through this crisis. There are going to be other people whose, uh, whose way of being affected by this is a lot more invisible. People who don't have much family or many friends, people who are older and shut in their house, people who tend to suffer from depression or anxiety, who are going to be adversely affected by the isolation. These are people that we can also reach out to. Maybe something we can do today is take very seriously this command to love our neighbor as ourself and take a moment to ask seriously, what are some concrete actions I can take today? What are some concrete actions I can take this week to love those people? Does it mean putting in a phone call to somebody who I know lives alone and doesn't have many people in their life? Does it mean putting in a phone call to somebody who I know suffers from depression for whom social isolation and distancing is going to be hard or even dangerous? Does it mean making a donation to someone who's suffering adversely from a shutdown of their business or their way of their livelihood? We'll have lots of opportunities and we're probably gonna have even more that we learn about. But this is the, what God gives us, that we sink deeper into our love of God and we sink deeper into our love of neighbor. And even in this, a very disrupted Lent, we have lots of opportunities to do both. Trusting in the love of God, we raise our prayers to the one who made us. We pray for the holy people of God. We pray especially for the holy people of God of St. Joseph and St. Francis Xavier Parish. We pray that we may always love God and that our love of God may always spill over into the way that we love our neighbor as ourself. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for the church and all the many people who have leadership roles in the church for Pope Francis, for the bishops, for pastors, for community leaders, pastoral ministers, catechists, and teachers, for all the many people in their leadership in the church, especially in a moment where God's people need them dearly. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all civic leaders and leaders of nations, that especially in this moment of difficulty, they may be given the gift of wisdom and be, may be deeply motivated by a pursuit of the common good. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are sick. We pray for all those who fear becoming sick. We pray for the many people who care for the sick. We pray for those who do the difficult work of public health. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As we know there are many other needs in our world and we raise those people up as well. We pray for the homeless, the hungry, the suffering, the dying, the incarcerated, the homebound, for refugees and for migrants. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those for whom this Mass is intended, for Calvin Ramirez, Martin Lee, and John Joseph Bartoli, Bartoletti, and for James Ward. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In silence, wherever we happen to be, wherever we happen to be participating in this Mass, we raise our own needs to God. We lift up our own needs. We lift up the needs among our family and friends, and we lift up the needs of the world that lie in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. To you, O oh God, we lift our prayers. You've given us so many good things, but because of your great love for us, we dare to ask for even more. And therefore, we lift up all these things in confidence and hope, for we lift them in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for from your goodness we have this bread to offer fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for from your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed
please pray, sisters and brothers, that these gifts, yours and mine, may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good of all God's holy church. Look with favor, we pray, Lord, on the offerings we dedicate, that they may be pleasing in your sight and always be salutary for us, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just that we should always give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you do not cease to spur us on to possess a more abundant life. Being rich in mercy, you constantly often par- offer pardon, pardon and call on sinners to trust in your forgiveness alone. Never did you turn away from us. And though time and again we have broken your covenant, you have bound the human family to yourself through Jesus, your Son, our Redeemer, with a new bond of love so tight that it can never be undone. Even now you set before your people a time of grace and reconciliation, and as they turn back to you in spirit, you grant them hope in Christ Jesus and a desire to be of service to all, while they entrust themselves more fully to the Holy Spirit. And so, filled with wonder, we extol the power of your love and proclaiming our joy at the salvation that comes from you. We join in the heavenly hymn of countless hosts, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your spirit that they may become the body and blood of your beloved son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we were once lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. And looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son. And grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart together with Francis our Pope and Blaise our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles, with St. Joseph and St. Francis Xavier and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters whom we humbly commend to your mercy. 
Then, freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command informed by divine teaching, together we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant us peace in our day. that By the help of your mercy, we may be always kept free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faithfulness of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Wherever you are, wherever you happen to be participating in this Mass, take a quiet moment and pray for peace. Pray for peace in your own life, peace among your family, peace among your friends, peace in the world. Lamb of God. We take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world, grant us your peace. As we prepare for communion, we recognize that we, the baptized, and we who share in the body and blood of Christ throughout the world are one body. We are, as the Eucharistic prayer we prayed just now says, bound together in Christ with a bond so tight it can never be undone. So now I invite you as this moment of communion to take a moment and remember and call to mind that communion that you are a part of, that we are all part of one another everywhere in the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed, how happy are we to be called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. Let us pray. May your strength be at work in us, O Lord, pervading our minds and bodies, that what we have received by participating in this sacrament may bring us the fullness of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mass is ended. Go and announce good news with your lives. Thanks be to God.